Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Champion Connections. I'm your host, Chris Coleman. My guest today is a female engineer who saw the problem in the market and decided to take action to fix it. She created Girls Auto Clinic and her job, her role, her passion is helping women learn about auto mechanics as well as learning how to fix their own car. So I hope you enjoy today's session, today's episode. There's a lot of cool things you can learn. And just like you and I learned some cool things too. So enjoy. Hi, I'm Patrice Banks and I'm the founder of Girls Auto Clinic. I'm a mechanic that caters to women and I offer free workshops for people to come and learn about their cars, maintenance and service of their cars so they feel a little bit more in control if something happens or goes wrong, that they know how to talk to a mechanic, that they don't panic if something happens to their car. Just give them a little bit more knowledge so they feel comfortable. Also in the future, I'm planning on opening my own shop, Girls Auto Clinic, that will cater to women. Um, I want to have female mechanics there, so I'm looking to do outreach and talk to other women about being in this industry and just kind of share the knowledge and and help women understand more about automobiles and vehicles so we can kind of get more comfortable with them. Cool, cool. So (laughs) how did you come up with this uh, idea and vision? And like, I guess growing up was being an entrepreneur or um, helping women or others in particular, like your your focus, your goal? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that was my goal growing up. I asked my mom, and she said it was to help women, but I don't remember that really being my goal. I've always remembered being like, I want to go to Hawaii <laughs> <laughs> and like be on the beach. Um, and then I was really good at math and science. So everyone said you should be an engineer. So I was like, okay, and I did. And then, um, and I was pretty successful at it, but I wasn't entirely happy until I started, um, I moved to Philly. I've lived all over and um, I moved into the city for the first time and I met a lot of great young women who are, um, have good jobs or own their own businesses. They're usually single, young, independent. And so I wanted to start a blog for, for us that's talked about things that typically men know how to do or we have to pay people to do stuff that you wouldn't see women do, like being an engineer. You don't see a lot of female engineers. And when I tell people I'm an engineer, they're usually like, wow, you must be really smart, that's cool. You don't see a lot of female engineers and you definitely don't see a lot of female engineers that look like you. So when I surveyed women to ask them about things I should blog about, overwhelmingly, I got um, cars. I feel like I get taken advantage of by car mechanics. I wish I knew more. So I started researching a little bit. I was looking for a female mechanic to help me and I couldn't find any in the area. I, I looked um, nationally and it's very, very limited. And so I saw an opportunity and I decided to go back to school um, to learn automotive technology and I loved it. I love learning about cars and how they work. That's probably the engineer in me. And one of the things I think I do really well is being able, I've done this well as an engineer, is um, being able to explain things to people who aren't an expert at the trade to where they get it, where you don't give them too much detailed information, but you're able to explain it where it's relatable and they understand and they get the point. So um, I've always excelled at giving presentations and talking to people and so that's what I do now and it kind of just unfolded as I'm talking to people about it and started rolling out and it's developed into what it is now and it's continuing to grow and develop so I'm excited to see where it's going. It sounds like you have that traditional entrepreneurial mindset. You were you worked as an engineer at what Dupont, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I still work there. I still okay. work there. You're like, this hey. goes viral. I still work there at Dupont. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, hey, I don't really like the nine to five world, and so I'm a branch out and try to you know solve mm-hmm. someone's problem. And here you came up with your idea. Uh, would you say no, that? I don't- Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I never really thought, and maybe that's because I I never really see myself as something um, definite. Like, you're like, well, you know, it seems like you do have an entrepreneur in you. I don't see that as being an entrepreneur. I was just 
and, and I never really saw myself as being an engineer. I just kind of was doing stuff that I thought that I was good at or that I enjoy. So for me, it was like it was not that I don't like working the nine to five. But I just don't really like being defined by something so, um, you know, with boundaries on it. Like nine to five engineer. I'm like I feel like I'm so much more than that. I don't I don't like fitting into boxes. I like doing things different and um, being a part of something bigger than me. So if that's what being an entrepreneur is, then all right, I'm I mean, an entrepreneur. <laughs> The, uh, you're you're solving a problem that either you had or like a lot of people had. So technically, you're an entrepreneur. So okay, I'll take welcome, it. I'm welcome to the group. Welcome to the group. <laughs> I'm a shepreneur, actually. So. <laughs> an entrepreneur, and I have a friend that coined that phrase. That's an entrepreneur. Uh oh, copy. It's it's already copyrighted, ladies and gents. So don't try to steal it. Blah blah blah. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about, I guess your job as an engineer um, okay you mentioned there are not many women uh, in this this area so uh, what obstacles did you have to overcome in order to I guess quote unquote be taken serious uh, I know that sometimes that's a problem because mm -hmm. I don't know men think that women aren't intelligent or something mm -hmm. um, so if you could touch on that that would be awesome okay so um you know, and I don't want to discourage people from being an engineer, from being a female engineer. It's a lot different today than it was 20, 30 years ago. And I actually run a program at DuPont called Explore Engineering. We bring in like 100 high school girls and we have this fun day with them where they're doing experiments, they're learning about engineers, um, engineering, they're interacting with other female engineers. We're just trying to do more outreach and get them excited and learn about what engineers do in a practical way. Remember, again, I was talking about relatable, where they can understand it. It's not over their head. Yeah. Um, so it's great to be a female engineer just because it's always great to be in a job that not a lot of people do or to have a niche that not a lot of people have. You, when you're a female engineer, and I'm a minority, so you're a minority and a female, which is two minorities, and an engineer, you don't see a lot of those out there. So you, when it's rare and they see someone like you, you stand out, and it's always good to stand out. And then you have opportunities that come to you because of that, because they're looking for diversity. So they're looking for women, they're looking for minorities to be able to step up and take on positions um, in engineering or in management or anywhere in a company if they show that you have that initiative and leadership skills or whatever skills they may be looking for. So, but you do run into people that, especially in engineering, but I don't think it's because you're a woman, I just think engineers kind of have a I'm smarter than you type of mentality because you do have to be very smart as an engineer and so you run in a, to a lot of people who just come off very arrogant about their intelligence and I mean it's funny because people love that show um, the Big Bang Theory yeah and and they think it's hilarious and I'm like yeah it's funny but it's true because I, and I work with people like this every day that's why it's not hilarious to me because there are people like Sheldon at my job not as extreme, but there are, and I, I mean, I can think of a couple right now. So it's you do work with people like that in real life, and you have to know who you are as a person, um, and and not be, uh, you know, insecure about your own intelligence, or go and go with your gut. Not don't be afraid to be um, wrong or make a mistake, and make sure that you have a, a strong mentor that believes in you and can help you with situations that you, that come up that you may know not, not how to handle, especially when it comes to being an engineer, a female engineer, and being able to be taken seriously. I was fortunate enough that not only was I was the only female engineer, I was the youngest engineer. We had a lot of older engineers in my group. And so they kind of saw me as like the young person that needs to learn, and, and they gave me a lot of opportunities to do things because of that. So I didn't have a lot of competition at, on my peer level, to say. But if I did, it'd probably be a little bit more competitive. Oh, that is that is cool. Uh, you mentioned the need for a mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you find your mentor, whether it's for engineering or for um, your auto clinic? Okay. Um, I don't have a mentor yet for my auto clinic. I'm looking to get one. I met a possible one um, yesterday. The thing about a mentor and having a mentor relationship is it's something that 
um, has to develop. It's not going to be easy to find. It's almost like having a boyfriend. Um, so it's somebody you have to click with. Oh, same boyfriend number two. Sorry. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it has to be someone that you click with and that you relate with. And um, I'm a very personable person. I, I love to talk. I love to learn about people. So it's not really hard for me to reach out and try to find a mentor. I actually have a lot of unofficial mentors just because I love to 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 be able to relate to people. So I'll talk to someone and and talk to them about a problem and if I feel like there's a connection there, there's, there, there'll be somebody that I'll want to talk to again. So at work, you know, I had two or three mentors and depending on what I want to talk about, I'll call them up and, you know, make that connection with them. I, I just, I have a easy way of making connections with people. But I haven't found a mentor yet for Girls Auto Clinic and I signed up at SCORE online to get a mentor, but I hadn't heard anything back. So um, I had went to this networking event yesterday for African American businesses and there was the president of SCORE Philadelphia was there and it was this this um, older white gentleman, he looked Italian or something, nothing that I would see as a mentor, right? And um, But I went up to him and I said, you know, I signed up for a mentor on SCORE and I haven't heard anything and we started talking and he asked me what my business was and I told him, you know, female mechanic, I cater to women, and his eyes like lit up and he's like, you know, I've, I've had many businesses and I've worked in food and the other business I've worked in is auto, the automotive business and um, I've had a couple of shops, the auto repair shops, I'd love to work with you and be your mentor, I think your idea is great and so we, I made that connection and I'm looking forward to meeting with him and seeing how he can help me out. Nice. So you never know, it's like you never know who would be able to help you, it's like, it's, and it's never the people that you expect. All. My two mentors at work are two older white gentlemen that I love to death. Like they would be family, you know. So it's it's never who you expect it to be. So pretty much love keep your eyes life. open. <laughs> keep your eyes open. You never know who's out there. Yeah, don't close people off because you think that they can't help you. Because you know you never know. And I mean, and I've learned that just from my experiences because I was like, yeah, he's here's this older white guy at this African American business networking thing. Like, how is he gonna help me? And then just making that small connection, and his when his eyes lit up, it just got me really excited about about awesome. it. Awesome. So. Well, here's a a baby. Congrats. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you did also mention um, the room for failure. Can you talk about uh, a particular instance with um, either engineering or uh, your girl's auto clinic where you experienced failure, some type of barrier? that like either you had to take a step back and was like, whoa, okay, if I don't get past this, like I may give up or you just like ran through it and was like, forget it. Whatever happens, happens. Oh man, you should have get <laughs> Failure. You know, I haven't had any major failures and it's not because I haven't failed I think it's just because I don't look at them as failures I usually take it as I didn't get something that I wanted now what do I need to do to change that and make it into what I need it to be okay. so I've heard no before you know or I've heard not right now but I don't look at that as failures you know I take that kind of stuff as all right, what else do I need to do? What what do I need to get to that point that I was trying to? Maybe I wasn't. It wasn't the right time. Um, so it's hard for me to say this was a failure, and you know, because I just never really had anything major that would have been like, you know, what I extremely failed. Maybe in a failed relationship, <laughs> but even then, it's like you know you. It's a lesson learned. I, yeah, I don't look. I, I hate that word fail, fails, failure. I don't. I don't really like it. Um, you know, and it. I've I've learned as to become an entrepreneur that you can't. And that you always see these quotes about failure and you know what success looks like. And you have to fail many times to be successful. But I don't see them as failures or setbacks. I just see them as challenges. You're not. It, I mean, it's just just a part of life. You're gonna have things that come up that don't work out for you. That doesn't mean you failed. It just means that didn't work out for you. 
and you, sure. there, it's not the only route to take to get to where you're, what you're trying to do or where you need to be sure. or to be happy. So I don't really look at things as, as, as failures. They were just kind of like it didn't, didn't work out that way. So, Okay, you know. here, here's a follow-up on that. Because okay. it also takes like a strong mentality um, and uh, a sense of, hey, I believe in myself so much that like I know I can make it. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you do like either daily or that you books that you've read that have helped to build you up to this level? Well, you know, one of the things I don't do well with is rejection. I don't do well with rejection, so I don't like to reject people. And when somebody rejects me, it, 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 I take it personally. Like, it hurts my feelings. It's almost where it makes me want to cry. And I know as being an entrepreneur, I have to get better at that. And I think it's really just having a, a, song, a strong sense of who you are and um, being happy with yourself and understanding that you don't need someone's approval to do what you want to do and to be happy and um, sometimes if it's a and it sounds so cliche and I hate cliches I hate quotes and I hate cliches I hate seeing quotes on Instagram I hate seeing you know the because it's like I want to talk you know I want to talk to people and get their experiences like we're doing right here, then then hear a quote that somebody just repeats over and over again that you see. Like quotes are nice, but that it's not everything. Yeah. Um so it's important to just like I said, you have those mentors, you have people um around you that believe in you or that support you and or that like what you do and that can be encouraging. That's important. But it's most important that you are that person to yourself which can be difficult to be that person. And that's something that I've struggled with, which is why I struggle with rejection, because I have to be okay with being rejected and not take it personally and understand that just because I've been rejected doesn't mean something's wrong with me. It doesn't mean that I'm not intelligent. It doesn't mean that I'm not the right person for this. It just means that not everything is for everybody. Not everybody's going to want it or like it. Sure. So I just... I uh, kind of look at it that way. I don't really read um, self-help like books, but I like to read a lot of, about entrepreneurs because they always have really great advice that they give. One of my favorite um, websites right now is Addicted to Success. It always has really good information from other entrepreneurs um, on their their experiences, kind of like what you're doing. That's how I like to learn instead of reading like a book that how you know the highly you know habits of seven habits of highly successful people. In my yes, that's probably a really good book and has some good information in it. You know, I like kind of hearing it right from the horse's mouth. Got it, people got who it. are doing it, right? People yeah. who are doing it. So fair enough. All right. So in five years. Where do you see Girls Auto Clinic? Who knows? We're, I, you know, it's an interesting question. I got this question on an interview when I when I first interviewed for DuPont. I've worked there for, it's gone on 12 years. The only company I've ever worked for in my life. Um, well, as an engineer. And I got this question in my interview and he said, where do you see yourself in five years? And I said, I don't, I don't know. You know, who, who knows where I'm going to be tomorrow? You never know what opportunities are going to come up and take you somewhere completely different. So I, I don't usually like to plan really hard, like I'm going to have this, this, I'm going to be married with children, I'm going to have this, and Girls Auto Clinic is going to be like national chain, you know, franchise. But this is my vision that I would like to have is um, I'd like to have a shop. Um, I want to have female mechanics. They're not out there, so I'm going to have to recruit women and have them learn about being an automotive mechanic, go to school. I'd like to set up internships and scholarships. You know, I want to change the face of what a mechanic looks like, especially a female mechanic. I want, I like people to be, when I tell them a mechanic, they're like, wow, really? That's so cool. And I want other people to, to do that. I read an article on CNN that said automotive industry is the industry that is least represented by women out of all of the industries um, 
and I saw a huge opportunity. Like I love seeing women do things that you don't, you know, we typically don't do or people don't think that we do. And being someone who is feminine, I wear my red heels. You know, that's part of my logo. I still like to dress up and, and get pretty and be sexy, but I get my hands dirty. I like to work on cars. You know, I can still be a kind of a grunt when it comes to, to that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, so there's many, you know, aspects to me. So I, I want to kind of to do that, change the face of that. I'd love to have, you know, be on a show like a new show like today, like the Today Show, and once a week and do like Teresa's Tips or something where I'm just teaching people about cars, kind of taking out. Can you hear that? Yeah. The um, sounds, sirens? Sounds intense. Sorry. Um, windows are open and I'm a really big, I'm on a really busy street. Um, so I'd love to do something. That's like my biggest fear is to be in, on camera, like in front of the TV. Um, so I would love to do something like that once a week where I have a little segment on a new show um, talking about, you know, cars and just helping people. I, I do love to help people. Um, I love to make people more comfortable. And and feel like they've learned something and that they can um, you know be successful cool. or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. So. So. Patrice, you are obviously yes, very Chris. awesome. You are definitely a champion, and I thank you for joining thank me you. today. I'm a Don't, champion. Yeah. Did you realize? It reminds me of that song, that Kanye song. Maybe that should be the you theme. You're a champion in your eyes. Uh -oh. Okay, we gotta work on that. We can make the intro, but. Where can people okay. find you on the interwebs if they want to mm -hmm. learn more about mm -hmm. what you're doing, if they want you to come talk to them, etc.? Okay. So my website is Girls Auto Clinic. This is really easy. Website, girlsautoclinic.com. Facebook is Girls Auto Clinic. Instagram, Girls Auto Clinic. And Twitter is Girls Auto Clinic. Or you can email me, girlsautoclinic at gmail.com. Really simple. There easy. It is. There it is. Girls Auto Clinic. Try to make it as easy as possible for everyone. That's, that's what life is all about, right? <laughs> yes. Well, once again, I thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having Keep me. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I know I could definitely use this because I don't right. crap about mechanics. I'm going to uh, teach you a little something, Chris. That's, see, that's what it's all about. Champions <laughs> yes. making connections. Yes. Boom. Wordplay. All right. So you're all officially right. off the hot seat. Boom. Okay. Wow. Wasn't that like really good i mean patrice thank you for coming on today uh you're very inspiring not only being an engineer but also taking a risk and jumping into a completely different field in order to help other women around the country around the world ladies and gentlemen honestly if you want to do anything just do it i hope today helps to prove that passion dedication drive will open up doors that you never imagined so once again as i always say we're all champions we just have to make those connections. I'll see you next time. Bye.